All right, Justin joins us. I understand that uh, you're taking a couple of days before you go to Scotland to go to Spain, of all places, and I certainly hope that you're lolling about some beachside resort having a nice cold lager, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, good. good. G'day, Marty. It, it absolutely is. Um, it's really nice to be here. I'm over with some friends that uh, I made through my time playing over in, in this part of the world, in the UK, and um, yeah, they're actually Gibraltarians, actually, so... I'm in a little spot called Soto Grande just out of there. So if anybody wants to try and look it up, look for the Valderrama. Everybody knows the Valderrama golf course. It's basically in that zone. So, yes, it's a beach resort. It's a beautiful place, and it's nice to be here. Okay, before we talk any rugby then, this is what I like. The first thing you said, I met some mates that I met when I was playing rugby. Even in the professional mm. era, it's still that, is it? You contest on the field, you have a beer afterwards, all of a sudden you still know each other 10 years later, 20 years later. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why Roy Rugby retains certain values that uh, other professional sports um, don't. And long long may that live because it was bred from that uh, amateur status. And uh, I certainly came through that amateur era into the professional era. But um, yeah, absolutely. The, the time that you spend on the rugby field, once that 80 minutes is done, uh, you formulate good friendships. And, and the cool thing is it's people who know about... The, the I guess the the work ethic that you go through. They also know about the sacrifice, but equally um, they they want they want to make sure that they can sit down with someone and just have a good cold beer and a chat. So yeah, no, it's very very much retain those friendships, which is great. All right, I mean, I want to ask you about these tests over the weekend, but the first question that, that I'm curious about is: this is the first time that you would have watched a test or been at a test in a very long time where you're not working. And 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 look, we don't consider it work, Justin, because you know you and me, we and we love going along anyway. But there is something different about yep. it when you're actually just there watching. How is it actually being at an all-black test where you didn't have to, where you weren't being crossed to, where you didn't have to give your opinion? You probably gave it to whoever's sitting next to you. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I did. Um, look, I, I really enjoyed it, Marty, and you're absolutely right. You're yeah, right, guys like us who, who are in media don't often get that luxury. Um, but th- there's nothing that can replicate being live at a stadium, you know, uh, amongst the crowd and the atmosphere, you know, someone, somewhere like Millennium Stadium where the roof is closed. You're there, you get the feel of the singing, the national anthems, and, and you, you get a real appreciation for what the game can deliver uh, to, to the spectator, I, I guess, when you when you're working you're going through your processes of calling the game um, or in whatever capacity you're doing, you're, you're, you're looking for things uh, in the game, um, whereas my mindset that was weekend was just to go along and enjoy it and be in the mindset that uh, I can be a spectator and can just take it all in. And, and it's, it's, uh, it was really rewarding, actually. Um, but, you know, I think it's the reason that we do go and do these things live is because when you're there, it's just got a different feel about it. And, and um, you know, when you're, when you're doing that for a job, you want to, be able to bring that feel into people's living rooms. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's what it's all about, I guess. And um, unfortunately, that's not the case at the moment um, for me. But, uh, yeah, it was great to go along. And, uh, mate, the best thing was enjoy a couple of cold beers, which I don't usually no, do exactly. when I'm working. That's so it. That was yeah. quite good as well. Millennium Stadium, Justin Marshall with his 81 Test Veteran of the All Blacks on the platform. Uh, I thought we played bloody well, mate, but having said that, and I hope you agree with me, they gave us the space to play well. They didn't really have any ball runners. They had their big number eight. They didn't really have any others. But you know that crucial thing where they give us a metre in front of us and what a difference that makes? Yeah, absolutely. And and you've analysed it well. I I certainly felt that the All Blacks always looked like they had another gear in them as well. you know, the Welsh had their moments in the game, but they were very rare. And, and when the All Blacks, you felt, wanted to pull the trigger and got into the right areas, it was inevitable they were going to score. Um, they had the measure of the Welsh defence. The line speed didn't phase them. Uh, they had good balance and composure about their game. You know, the cross kick to Geordie Barrett. Yeah. Uh, you know, that makes, makes wingers uh, get a little bit worried defensively. So just doing that, again, creates more space. Um, I certainly felt that our forwards completely out physical the, the Welsh forwards. Uh, and, and really, in, in, in terms of you know playing in the right areas, Aaron Smith and Richie Monga did a really good job, and everybody else, when they got into that zone, switched in to the, to the right mindset. So, a very good performance. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be derogatory towards a good performance. Um, I do question the calibre of the opposition. Um, you know, Wales have got a lot of injuries and. and and are nowhere near at full strength, but they're still the Welsh and they're still trying to beat us for the first time in you know, near on 70 years. So you've still got to compete and compose yourself to that situation, um, which the All Blacks did well.
Well, look, when you get when Audi Savier is playing like that, I mean, he's box office. He's worth the ticket mm. price, isn't he? He's just such a rampaging bull. But you are a rampaging bull in that situation because it's front football and you've got that space and you're allowed to. Yes, absolutely. And and when the opposition, uh, you know, are, are not as defensively, I, I guess, aggressive on defence as what you thought they would do, and you can make they're not easy meters. They're not easy meters. So please don't get me wrong in saying that, but. When you can put a little bit of footwork on and you can bust through a tackler and you can shrug them off and get over the advantage line and deliver that quick ball, which the majority of the Ford pack did. You know, they, they all fronted, they all carried hard. You know, Artie was outstanding, um, as, as he has been all season, mm. over the last two seasons, really. The loose Ford mix was really good. I thought he combined with Frizzell and Papali really, really well. Um, White Lot and Barrett didn't miss a beat in the front row was outstanding and good to see Cody Taylor back to form. And, um, you know, we've mentioned the back line with Geordie at 12. Uh, I, I hope they continue to select him there. Uh, the, the back line balance looks really, really good. Um, and, and when you think about it, probably one of the form players coming out of Japan and the, the Aussie test was Caleb Clark. He didn't really feature, but yet the All Blacks were still able to, to function really well. All right, I want to ask about the loose forward trail and ask about Geordie as well. I thought it was really interesting that the first two tries were scored by Cody Taylor, but it was an all black forward pack that was so determined. There was no one was passing the ball; it was just keep smashing that line, smashing that line, smashing that line. There was a real attitude going on. Yeah, there was. There was real intent in the way that they wanted to carry the ball. And look, uh, the old adage will never change: when you get aggressive out in line speed, which we know has troubled the All Blacks in the past. Um, it's very difficult to go around it uh, and to go lateral at it. You've got to go through it first. And if you can go through it first and then create quick ball and have that defence that is so narrow and uh, backpedalling, then you can go wide on it and open it up. And I thought the All Blacks went aggressively at Wales, um, didn't allow them to bring line speed, didn't allow them to restrict their pay, uh, their, their, their width in the game that they wanted to play. So they won that physical battle uh, and it was good old-fashioned roll your sleeves up and get stuck in there was there was no real I, I guess massive variations in the carries they were pretty mandatory um, good width and yeah they really fronted in that zone are we are we I mean I, I don't know whether I'm reading too much into this but is what is it Ian Foster is what he's trying to do with that back line are we creating interchangeable positions because when you saw Geordie out on the right wing I mean we're not going to put that kick in for Sev because I mean obviously there's such a height you know disparity there He's also almost playing fullback at some stages with Bowden and, inter- and interchanging there. And I'm just wondering whether, I mean, this is obviously deliberate, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it is. And it's exactly what he said when he's defended time and time again uh, why he won't p- play Will Jordan at fullback, because he believes he can enable him to, throughout their game plan, um, inject himself into the game basically as a full b- fullback will. And I certainly feel that that's the way that he's trying to balance this back line out. You know, that he recognises that Bowden Barrett is actually a 10 playing 15, but you've also got a 12 that can play 15. Uh, and and then, you've, then you've got the general uh, and Richie Mwonga and, and Aaron Smith. So those players can, can easily slot into positions that they're comfortable in anyway and, and come from the back or slot out to the wing. Let's remember, Geordie Barrett played wing for a whole season during the rugby championship in yeah, 2020. True. So... Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very much what he's trying to create. And the good thing was, it didn't it didn't narrow the All Blacks' attack because that's what it can do. Players who who uh, got the freedom to and and been given the license to move, they they all gravitate towards the breakdown, gravitate to be first or second receiver. But yeah, you're absolutely right in pointing out that Geordie was often out on the wing. Um, Bowden at, at times was a first receiver and at other times you know, it was a mandatory position as fullback. So the All Black attack looked really well balanced. I was, I was really happy with their shape. It looked good. Justin Marshall with us on the platform then. The loose forward trio, uh, you know, and the only the only suggestion Mex made on Friday was he, he wants to see Dalton at eight and Artie at seven and, and interchange that. What 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 we need now, though, is is, is obviously to carry this momentum. And, and, and when you hear Ian Foster say, oh, there are going to be changes for the Scotland test, and I know that you don't agree with this, and I don't agree with it either. Justin, my theory is, listen, we're at a World Cup next year. We have to win back to back to back if we make that quarterfinal, semifinal, final within three consecutive Saturdays. Why wouldn't you experiment with this and go, OK, there's your quarterfinal, semi-final against Scotland, final against England. Same team. If we get injuries, that's attrition. But actually put this team out, bang, bang, bang. Yep, 
no, I totally agree. I think that's the mindset that they've got to have. They just needed to play the three or the four test matches like they were were, were a World Cup uh, build up, and, and yeah, t- treat treat them all of them as knockout elimination style games, and and truck the players out there and make sure that they are not only improving but they're innovating as well, uh, and they're starting to gel and they're starting to recognise each other uh, in terms of combinations, um, you know, starting to find their way around the field and, and good, a, a real good confident feel amongst the side. You know, when you bring new personnel, personnel in constant, constantly, it just changes that dynamic all the time because every player has to adjust, adjust to a different face and an unfamiliar one that they haven't seen the week before. So, yeah, I certainly feel in terms of the loose forwards, um, you know, that, that, that combination was really good. I actually spent about, oh, I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes where I just watched Dolphin Papali'i live, actually, and, and that's the advantage of being able to be at the yeah, stadium. Yeah. <clears throat> and he, he, he generally was over the ball most breakdowns. And, and uh, Shannon Frizzell wasn't that much, um, and Artie was when he picks his moments, and he's very good at doing that. But I think fulfilling that role as the open side, I thought Dalton Papali'i absolutely did that because he, he really competed at the breakdown and if he didn't turn the ball over, he made a nuisance of himself and yeah, it was good to watch him doing that live. He's got really good work rate. Um, he didn't go missing and um, yeah, I certainly felt that uh, he, he had... He, took another really giant step forward in the terms of his performance. Good to hear. All right, I've got a couple of quick questions before we let you go then. I thank you always much, uh, very much for your time, mate. Okay, so looking at those other teams, Ireland versus South Africa. I know that, look, that, there's been a lot of criticism about that game, but that looked to me like a real World Cup semi-final or quarter-final where it's simply about getting more bloody yeah. points in the opposition. And Ireland did it perfectly, I thought. Yeah, they did. And, and they've proven themselves to be a side that can do that. You know, they, they, they've got... Again, they've got really good balance in the way that they play, but when they need to roll their sleeves up and get stuck into a game, they're, they're able to do that. That's the problem with South Africa. They can bring you in to the style of game that they want you to be combative against them. And and, and if you get lured into that, whether it's the, the conditions or actually South Africa are doing a good job at bringing you down to that type of game, um, whatever it might be, uh, when you get in, when you enter into it, you've got to compete. Um, otherwise, you're going to get left behind. And I certainly felt that that's the, the way that the game unfolded. And Ireland showed that they can um, they can achieve still success if they get forward into a game like that. I don't think Andy Farrell will be um, absolutely elated the, the way that Ireland, Ireland played. But he will be in the fact that they got forward into an arm wrestle by South Africa and they won that arm wrestle. Finally, then, what are we meant to make of France and England? Uh, you know, Australia should have won. But how many times do we say that? Australia should have won. The thing is, they didn't win, OK? And then you've got Argentina upsetting England at uh, Twickers. Now, I know that that's not going to count for Jack when we play them at uh, Twickers because they'll grow another five legs, the English. But these, but these two are the big bogey teams from the Northern Hemisphere. What are we meant to make, for them? What are we meant to, make about that? Yeah, well, it shows that they are equally as vulnerable as every other team at the moment. Like, there's there, there's been a lot of uh, gaps being bridged uh, in, in in the recent calendar year, and all t- lots of teams are showing the ability to beat each other. Uh, and you really have to be on on your day. And uh, no doubt about the fact that those those games went right down to the wire. Um, but but good sides get the job done, and you know you would expect England at Twickenham to have got the job done, and they didn't. Argentina showed great composure. Man, they're maturing as a as a rugby side far yeah. out. It's good mm. to see. Yeah, and then then equally, you know, this this French team, this much wanted French team that everybody's so worried about and so I guess uh, infatuated with the fact that they are already a lay down Mazier to win the rugby world yeah, cup. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, if a team like Australia can go there and they can put them under that much pressure and should, if they have. Uh, a, a more composed side um, have won that test match and it shows the French are actually vulnerable in Paris which is good for the rest of the world to know that they are not that um, they have that mystique about them this um, unbeatable nature um, that many people think that they are actually achievably beaten in their, on their own patch which has got to give everyone else confidence